Who, who, who? I'm a hillbilly. Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's paint his eyes. We're going to go with the old yellow eyes. that I had thought about uh just digging these eyes in with like a drill bit or something and then coming back with the five minute epoxy and adding a little bit of this yellow paint to it so they'd be shiny but uh, when I checked my five minute epoxy supply it doesn't look like I have enough to do that okay guys so there he is what he's looking like all right we just painted the stump black and uh, then we'll come back with gray and we'll dry brush it so we got our, our crevices down there will be nice and black and then we can come back and dry brush it with the gray once it's dried up a little bit so we can take this guy here and set him off to the side. That's what he's going to look like after we put the Maj Podge on him and seal him up. And then we can put him on the shelf. Okay. So let's set him off to the side and let that black dry up a little bit. Now we can come back to our owl that's going in our wood spirit head. All right. And we're going to do the same thing with him. We're going to, to uh, get them all two different types of gray here like we did the Big Al. And we'll paint his eyes yellow and uh, paint his feet orange. Paint his claws black. And then he can be epoxied onto our wood spirit and he'll be done. So, uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're going to need some more of our two different color grays. Let's clean our brush out. Always keep your brushes clean, guys. Otherwise, they get plugged up with paint, and then you have to go buy more. And you know you're not going to find any, because I see, uh, Seen on Jordy's YouTube video last night, he went and bought up all the paintbrushes in Canada. He's a paintbrush hoarder. And he openly admits it. Damn you, Jordy, and your paintbrush hoarding. Okay. Just joking. Just joking, Jordy. Aw, that's what I get. That's what I get for joking around, crapping my paint. Okay, so 
a little bit of gray, a little bit of dark gray. Uh, a little bit of water, a couple drops, a couple drops. Mix it up. Okay. Let's mix the light gray up. Now we gotta mix the dark gray up. Okay, that's mixed up. All right. Uh, let's see. I think we'll take a little black. And we will take the black. We're going to paint it in between his toes. So that way there, when we come back over with the orange, his toes will stick out better. Something like that. Right. Well, maybe we'll just leave his feet black. What do you think? Just leave his feet black? Why not? We can do that. It's our owl. We can do anything we want with our owl, right? Okay. Now let's take this light gray. And uh, I guess I should dry brush him first. Yeah, let's dry brush him with light gray. Get a brush here. You kind of want a stiff brush for this. For the dry brushing part, kind of want a stiff brush. Stiff for the brush, little Okay, learn how to speak, Rob. The stiffer the bristles are, the less it wants to go down into your nooks and crannies that you've already painted with the dark gray. Okay, that's why you kind of want to. When you buy your brushes, you can buy them really soft or kind of stiff, and that's what we're wanting here is a stiff, stiffer type brush okay okay I think we I think that's good for there and then we'll just dry brush them across his back a little bit never to be seen again his back once we uh once we glue him in the hole yeah gotta actually touch him first once we glue him in his hole of our wood spirit head I guess if you look I guess you could look through the back of the hole and he's hanging up You'll actually, I don't think you'll ever see the back side of this owl again. Yeah. A little, little gray on his horns there, just like we did the big one. The other side.
Something like that there. Yep. Ooh, wrong color. Pay attention to what colors you're dipping into. <laughs> You ask we will have it. You ask we will out. Like that. A little up here, I guess. A little across the top. And I'm going to show you the, what we're going to do here. Is, like I said, we're just very little paint. Um, we're cleaning it off in our bigger tray over here. And we're just basically dry brushing them. Take a little paint, smear it all over your, your bigger palette. Bigger paint thing there. Uh, the more water you have, the less it wants to dry out on you. Okay. So, here. I think why this guy, I, I like this guy a little bit better is because uh, his top of his head is smaller, so the points don't go up as high as they did on the, the bigger one. So something to keep in mind when you're, you're carving, guys. When you're first doing your bird. Is... Um, Yeah, but when I do this again, what I'll do is when I cut this part in here, that'll be one of the first steps I do, I think. Um, once you cut this part back and cut this part down and get your horns, um, instead of going to the beak, go to the eyes. Get your eyes where you want them up here. Now, don't worry about the sides. Use your center line. Once you get this shaped, then um, <clears throat> you can kind of draw yourself a line of where these are going to be. And then put your eyes in. And then your distance from your eyes to the top of your head will be better. And then, um, like this probably could have been up a little bit higher here. But because I've never really done owls before, I wasn't quite sure. So um, what I should have done was carve this out first, had my center line, went ahead and put my eyes where I wanted them, and then that would have gave me where this would have come down. I probably would have moved this down uh, so it wasn't so far down, and then the beak would have came up a little bit, and then the head would have been shorter, because I always got kind of squatty heads on them from the pictures I've seen. So that's just... Uh, just some information there. Now, the question is, will I remember it the next time I do it? I don't know. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll come back with the dark paint where we got a little bit heavy. And we're just going to put little, little lines. Same thing, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush.
you see how that breaks up that pattern almost gives it like that camouflage look well since an owl's a predator we want them to have that that camouflage look it wouldn't help him very much as an owl if he all of his game all the prey that he was going to hunt could see him right And you can come back with your light gray and put some, uh, that's what I ended up doing with the other one. I came back with the light gray and I put some dots in there. It wasn't, I didn't, when I, after I got done, I didn't feel that the wash was quite enough. Keep them in camera, Rob. So I kind of use the uh, the light gray and the dark gray, and I went back over them and just gave them some lines to make it look like it's feathers. So yeah, they can come back with the light gray. If you want to, and just put some dots in there. And you can mess around with this for hours and hours, getting it the way you want it. I mean, it's your owl. You can do as much to it or as little to it as you want. So keep that in mind. It's your owl. We don't do too many lifelike creatures around here. They're all kind of spin off of caricatures. My my thing with this is as long as it looks like an owl, we're doing pretty doggone good. So yeah, I just go around and I'm kind of just dotting them. I thought he looked pretty good with just the whitewash, but or the yeah whitewash, the uh, the dry brushing. But I wanted to show you guys what I did to the other owl to get him that uh, camouflage mix look, I guess if you want to call it that. And basically this is what I did. I just went around and painted little lines. Like this. Right, see, I think those wings are good enough. Let's paint little lines on his wings and uh, you know all over the place just the, the thinner the paintbrush you can get the better I think it will come out for you okay now we're gonna we're gonna get in here by his eyes I hope so I can figure out how to hold them to do this and I'm just gonna Make those lines, which are feathers that go around his eyes. And there again, if it, like that one's, I think it's a little too thick. We'll just come back with the gray and go in between them. Once he dries.
so we can thin those out. Actually, you could just take this gray and go all the way around his eyes, the light gray, and then come back with your dark gray later. And put the lines in. So you, you just got to play with it and see what, what uh, works for you. It's not, we're not, you know, it's not like it's uh, cut into it. The other owl, I actually cut the feathers in around his eyes. Okay. So... What I'll do, and uh, by going over the lighter gray with the darker gray, it'll also lighten up the dark gray a little bit. So it looks like you've got multiple colors when you're doing this. And if you're, what you're doing is you're building, the, building your color palette, okay? You're, you're actually ending up with three different type, three different color grays. The original dark gray color that we had. And then at, when you paint this dark gray over the light gray, it'll actually lighten the dark gray. So it gives you a, a third color. So it gives you that more of a 3D type look going see how that's giving it more of a it's giving your paint a little more dimension now believe me I am no professional painter this is just stuff I've learned as I've gone along here and you can take that for what it's worth which that information in five bucks will get you a cup of coffee As long as you go uh, someplace cheap for coffee. But you can kind of see what I'm saying here with the colors. not the best painter in the world I'm not even close to a good painter I know just enough to be dangerous with painting And like I said, you can fool around with this forever. And, uh, you know, it's up to you to say, hey, that's good enough. And I'm just about at that point right now. I think that's for what he is. I think that might be just good enough for this little guy.
I say that as I keep painting, right? Say that as I keep painting. But yeah, it's I mean we we are not going to definitely not going to win any awards for this. I don't know. Never won an award. I think he's good enough. All we gotta do now is come in here and uh all I wanna do is just come back here and touch up his this side. I'm gonna touch up the uh Feathers around his eyes, I guess you'd call them. Okay, so what we'll do. I think he's good enough. And we will paint his beak black. Like that. Burn right there. That. And then on the other one, I took the light gray and just the end of his beak. Painted it gray. All right. So now we need some yellow for the eyeballs, right? Yellow. Next time I go to the store, I'll get some more five minute epoxy. Probably get a couple of them. That way there, next time we do an owl, we can uh, go ahead and drill his eyes in and mix up a little bit of that epoxy and add some whatever color we want to make his eyes. Put it in there and let his eyes sit and then uh, we'll come back and we'll put the we will put the pupil in we'll just paint it in uh, I seen a couple guys try doing it by dropping black into the epoxy uh, while it was still wet or still setting and for some reason it ended up sinking and spreading so i think i think just putting the epoxy in with a little bit of paint to give it a color or you could just put it well no because i want it to be shiny so i'd put the paint in with the epoxy and stir it up and then pour it in here and then let them sit for the five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever. 
to uh, let that epoxy set up. And then you should have some shiny eyeballs, right? I'm going to take a little bit more of this gray and come in here and Now we'll take some of the light gray, come back, and let's put some little dots in there. We're just going to dot it in there this time, instead of making a paint stroke with it. Just on the high points. I want to try keeping it out of the valleys. Something like that. Looks like you might need a little more on the end of his beak here. Something like that there, yeah. So I think that's about it, guys. Got any questions, leave them in the comments. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to let this guy set up here. Let him dry up and see what he looks like. Like I said, you could spend three or four days messing around with it little owl like this. So that's what our owl looks like any, anyway, guys. Uh, okay. Just going around, we're, uh, I overextended the paint. Okay, I think that looks better. So, I guess that's it. Share, subscribe, like. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope that uh, maybe we learned something. Maybe. I'm not quite sure if I learned anything. Other than I should probably stay away from painting. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, we got our black... I don't know if his eyes are dry enough to do this yet. Hold still, Al. Well, I guess we're going to have him looking off to the side. Yep, nope, that black paint is not taken. It's still a little too wet. Okay, so... That's what he's going to look like. And then we are going to glue him in right here into our wood spirit. So hopefully the gray will offset the uh, the brown, the poly shade that Jordy used. Okay. So that's what he's looking like. And then our owl will sit right up inside there like this. Oh yeah, I think that'll clash enough where you'll be able to see the owl. So I'm going to let that dry. Then I'll go back and do his eyeballs. Alright. So, that's it for the painting. Share, subscribe, like if you want to. And uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. Be awesome. Carve something awesome. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Bye.